music synthesizers for the ESP32. Let's start. Okay, so we're playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I'll just turn that down a little bit. Well, before I do, as I started, this is a, a music synthesizer for the SP32. Basically, it's the development of my DAC audio library that I've been working on. Oh, there's a wire just about to pop out there. It did not hear anything. Let's push that back down. So I've been working on the DAC audio library. I'll put a link up above for the uh, one I did with WAV files, WAV files, however you want to pronounce it where it was just reading a, a WAV file and reproducing the sound digitally through the uh, DAC on the DAC on the ESP32. I'll turn that down now. I'll turn the volume down. The reason we're still seeing a, a signal just the same is because I'm actually intercepting and measuring the signal directly on the DAC output, not on the volume output. So it stays the same, matter what I do with the volume control there. So as I mentioned in my previous videos, it was always the intention this was going to be an audio library, which is why it's called the DAC Audio Library, so that we could do a lot more than just do WAVs. In fact, WAVs is just an easy way of me uh, testing the circuitry, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, WAVs are actually technically quite easy to play back. The more complex thing is doing what this is. Turn it up again. Until it gets to the bit where it's at the end of the song. There we go. Synthesizing. If you just listen to it, it's not a very coarse tone, it's quite a nice tone. What I'm doing, I'm actually synthesizing or attempting to synthesize their piano. Now, it's not very piano like because this is very early days of the software. I've made a token gesture uh, synthesizing a piano. A piano is roughly a triangular wave, sort of. If you look there, you can see it's definitely made up of triangular waves. And you'll notice the volume was up and down because in music, we have things called envelopes. Now, I'm not a musician, I can't play anything. I really am quite tone deaf. But I do understand how to look at a waveform and how to interpret it. And in music, waveforms for whatever the, the music instrument might be have certain elements to them as they build up the volume throughout the note and as, as they decay to the end of the note. And that's called the envelope. There's a very common one if you want to look it up called ADSR. It stands for attack, uh, duration, sustain. Is it duration? Oh, I can't remember. You can look it up anyway. As I say, I'm not a music lecturer at all. But you have envelopes where you can manipulate mostly the volume, but you can manipulate the frequency at the moment. At the moment, my software will manipulate the volume, so I can add envelopes on. So I get a very basic envelope for piano. So I looked at a piano note, and I roughly looked at how, and I analysed how the frequency, the volume is changing, and I roughly put an envelope onto that. So my software is capable of putting envelopes onto the bass notes coming out in order to make it sound like a particular instrument. The software to produce this, this music, I'll look on screen now, so there we go. In fact, we'll just turn that down as it's going to be playing off in the background. I'll turn it down a little bit. There we go. As it does get a little bit annoying. The notes, the, the music is here in this array. And it's just an array of bytes. It tells you there how the array, uh, how the data is stored. Basically, the, you have a note. And these notes are based on um, somebody else's work that uh, somebody did. I found it, I think it was on the Arduino main forums or Arduino main site where they created a file called pictures.h that says something like note C5 is whatever frequency that is. So the frequencies range from 30 to about 4,000, 4 kilohertz. So you have the note you want to play, then the next note, and then the next note, and then the next note. And if you look, it says followed by an optional change in play length in quarter beats. So it plays in musical beats. I've tried to mirror how music works, how your music is interpreted, not just do all have a duration of 50, 50 milliseconds or a tenth of a second or two tenths of a second or whatever it might be. I've done it in beats as music would, you, would work in beats like a metronome. So if you want to extend a note to make it look a bit longer, you put a beat in at the end. So you can see here I've put beat underscore two. That means that's when that note, the previous one, note G5, will play for two beats rather than the one beat that's the default. So that's the actual note, notes for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. 
Uh, we end on a silent note, and we do five beats for that before it actually repeats. This you always have to at the end. It's obviously it's basically marking it for the routine that interprets these notes. That that's the end of the music file. So that's the music data, and all we have to do to play that is we obviously, like we did before with the WAVs, you've got to create a Dacodio object, which is going to handle and control all the audio that goes through the Dacodio library, whether it's the WAV file or whatever it was, then create a music score class, which makes sense, trying to use the same musical term. So it's a score, it's a musical score sheet, and I've called it music. And all you need to do is to pass it that data from both. That's that. So you've created your music sheet there, and then to play it, like we did the web file, we did deck audio dot play, and then we put the um, the web uh, data in that point there. We're adding the music, so we just pass it this music class. That is it. Apart from in your loop, you put fill buffer. Now you can do anything else you want with that loop. You could calculate the value, or calculate bitcoins, or whatever you want to do, or you've got a game going, or whatever code you've got in there just runs as you would normally do it. And you just leave the fill buffer in there and it will actually play the music quite well. And it's that simple. All you need to do is say, play the music and you create that music file there and, and that's it. The library will handle the beats, the tempo, everything. So when you create this, it actually, if you just send in the music score, it defaults to some uh, values for beat. I think it defaults to about half a second for beat for the tempo, I think. So I'm sure it does. It, it defaults to Allegro, which is about 120 beats, which is about half a second, isn't it? So I think it defaults to Allegro, if I remember rightly what I've done. It defaults to the, the piano. As I say, it's that perfect inclination of piano. It will be as I get as I improve the software. We'll be able to, and I'm synthesizing a piano very basically now. Uh, and I'll improve that. It's a very quick knot together of uh, how a piano sounds. Much better than the basic square wave that you get out of most musical projects with microprocessors. With these embedded processors. And we just play it there. So if you want to change things, so let's change the fact that it keeps repeating over and over again. So we can say, oh, right there, do we? He wants it before it. So the music, I want to change. We have a property called repeat. In a moment, it's set to zero. The default is zero. Zero means, obviously, you're not going to play a piece of music zero times. Obviously, it wouldn't play at all. There's no point to it. So zero is a special exception. It means basically play infinitely. So we change that to one, re-upload. I might cut, jump some of these uploads in the tech time. So we go, and we'll just turn up the volume, getting ready. So we're uploading, so we'll turn it up. And it should just play once. Let's see. And believe me, I'm quite bored of this tune with the testing I've done as well. Here we are, come towards the end. Shouldn't it repeat? Give it a second. There we go. Done. So, I'll set it to infinite repeat again anyway. So something else we can do, we can, as I mentioned, as a default tempo of Allegro, we can change the tempo. Um, there are several tempos to choose from. I'll actually put them on screen now. So you can see, uh, there, there are more than that in music. I, I got these off the internet. There's a lot more than that. But they seem to be the basic ones covering more sort of beat ranges. So I'm going to change the tempo. So for the music, I'm going to change the tempo to tempo. Oops, and a really fast one. The fastest that I have actually got that we can have. So prettissimo. Um, <laughs> ignore my really bad... Non-Italian accent, I think. It's me, Mario! So again, compiling. I've left the volume turned up, so it should kick off as soon as it's uploaded. Oh, and I've put temp there. Tempo. So these, I say, try to keep it just like music, using musical terms. So tempo presses, prettissimo will play it about the beats that it should do if you were playing this properly as a musician. That's just because it's reboot the ESP32 so you get a bit of a blip of the old one. There you go, so it's a lot faster. So that's tempo, 
fortissimo, which is quite a fast beat. We can also change, as I said, this is a music synthesizer, so I, I, the aim is to actually get it synthesizing various instruments and sounds. Let's just turn that down a little bit, yeah. Very good, it's going to go on autos repeat forever. We could... Um, the idea is to synthesize many sounds. I say these are not digitized sounds, these are synthesized sounds. What I'm doing digitally is I'm playing with the waveform itself to generate the sound of that particular musical instrument, which doesn't actually take a lot of memory, just program code. So let's change the instrument. I've done, if I say, that's a piano or supposed to be. It's not the um, best one with you might hear. I will improve. So I'll set the instrument. Sure, that's the command I've set. So music, I'll set the instrument to, let's have a look. So instrument, let's go with organ. Oops, a little slight tall. We'll compile that and we'll turn it up so we can, and we'll, oh, we don't want Pratissimo again, but it's too late, it's sending it. I'm going to change that. Well, I'm going to take them to it, it'll default to Allegro and it'll repeat all the time anyway. So I'll save that, but it's going to be too late for this. We'll just listen to the very fast organ music as it uploads. Note the waveform when it comes up as well. So I'm going to change that to a leg roll, so I really don't like that. But if you take a look at the so it's tempo equals tempo leg roll, because as much as you might think two and two little stars is annoying, it's far more annoying when it's quick. So I'll just have to bring that back down, reduce the Playback speed, basically, the tempo. And you see, that's actually no longer a triangular wave, because an organ generally is a sine wave. As I say, it's more complex than that, and I'm only playing with the envelope of an organ very basically. So it doesn't sound perfect by any means, but as I say, this is early days. We'll try one more musical instrument, and we'll just get that up. Oh, we've got an error. I've done temp again. But what I'll do. We'll change that instrument to the last one that I've currently coded and allowed for, which is harpsichord. And again, take a note of the waveform that generally is what a real harpsichord has, which is why it sounds a bit like, this sounds a bit like an organ, the piano sounded a bit like a piano, because the envelopes that I've said aren't perfect. This will sound a bit like a harpsichord because of the waveform that we're using. Okay, so we're uploading. We'll get a couple of reboots. I get one more now. And again, look at the waveform. So if you note, a harpsichord is a sawtooth waveform, which is why we use a sit waveform. You can see the volume collapses quite quickly up and down for the harpsichord. If you're using basically the normal sort of tone that comes with Arduino software for Arduinos, it's just basically a square wave. And you can't control the volume very well. And you can't have notes like this or sounds like this. So as lovely as the harp score is, I'll just turn that down so it's, maybe it's just done it in the background. I'm not sure. It's really it's, it's quite annoying. Um, one more thing. You don't have to, as I said, if you pass one parameter here, it defaults and sets these as defaults for many things. But you can, if you want, put them in here as well. You don't have to set them afterwards. So I think the next one will be tempo. So if I put a copy of that, so if you pass the music, then the tempo, and then the instrument you want to use, let's maybe go back to piano actually. Although I do quite like the harps chord. I think Lurich and the Adams family back in the black and white days used to play that. Showing my age a little bit. So instrument piano and then the repeat value goes at the end. So I'll just delete them, no longer need them. So we're passing all those as when we're creating the music uh, object itself. So I'll just to give that a test, upload that. Should be the same, so apart from we'll go back to piano. There's all the harp score that's about to go.
Okay, uploading. Okay, a much more gentler sound. If you look carefully, you can see the wave, the volume of the wave changes, and that's as the note on the piano goes on quite a quick attack. It grazes in volume quite quickly. It then sort of fluctuates a little bit before it decays out. So I want to have a quick go at that. So I'm not, as I would usually do, I'd usually this, at this point in time probably go and show you the web page where you can download the library to do all this, etc. I'm not going to do that today because. I think I was getting to the situation where I was doing little bitty releases, changing the chords. I don't think it's helping anybody. I want to review. There are two basically audio pages up on the web at the moment regarding this. One for how I did the DAC audio with WAV files before and then an updated version. I'm going to redo that part of the website. So when this library is pretty much how I think it's going to be with probably not much change into the objects and commands and what they can do, I'll then start updating the website where we'll show you the build. So every time I update a page on the website, I'll actually do a video for it as well. So we'll show you the build of the actual um, hardware, which is really, really quite simplistic. It's the SP32, the amplifier, uh, volume control. And we have covered this in an early video. So when I do the video, I'll probably cut out that bit, actually. So we'll do it on the website, on the video. It's on the website. And as a video, we'll do a build of the hardware. So you might see a little bit of repeated parts of some videos as I copy out bits from uh, earlier in an early video. We're going to have a build of the hardware. Then we're going to show you how to play notes, basically, just like this. And after that, we'll show you how you can manipulate, because there's much more to, and we'll go back to the code, there's much more to the system than this already. As it stands, there are envelope objects instrument objects which you can manipulate a lot more than what you can do with this so you can actually make these sounds very very particular so for example I, I want like lasers up sounds explosions uh, I also at the moment it will do chords so you can't play a chord on your piano or whatever it might be and um, that's a relatively simple task to do to implement but chords are essential not just to boost chords in music but where I was Sorry, you might have noticed a bit of a, a break. The, my camera stopped recording for a second there. Uh, I want the music for Frogger to be a really good as rendition as I can make it. And one of the things is, as background music and sound, other sounds happening, and to do that, you have to mix those sounds to get them to happen at the same time. So I definitely want mixing of this. So I've got to implement that. So as I go along with the tutorials, I'll do, as I said, a build tutorial. I'll do a repeat of this, but a bit more just aimed at producing music, going through how the notes are stored. I will then do... Uh, 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 article, a tutorial on using the instrument object itself and then follow that up with using the envelope object. I will add some default objects in here as well so I will add some more instruments in there maybe as I go along but I'll also add in like laser signs, explosions, there's defaults where you can just say dacordi.play laser sound for firing without having to build up any sort of complexity of envelopes and sounds and things like that. So that's where I'm going with this. I think the next thing I'll do, I'll probably try and do mixing of sounds, because once I get to that stage, we I can put it back into the Frogger project, because it will then be doing enough for the Frogger project. So at the end of the day, when this is finished, you could probably actually produce a, a reasonable sounding synthesizer with it, with just an ESP32, some sort of keyboard. So I hope you enjoyed that. Remember to leave a big thumbs up, comment, because that really helps to promote videos and get my channel bigger. I uh, really appreciate it when you do that. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time.